Hi guys, Rob 46 here, working yourselves back to MotoGP20 on the Xbox One X. Today we're going to have a look at historic mode and uh, see what we got to do. Okay, so we basically got to choose our favourite rider, tackle some challenges, daily challenges, got easy one, intermediate one and a difficult one. I think we'll start with the easy one and uh, see what we can do. So 41 riders to unlock and 36 teams to unlock. Okay, right, so let's pick a rider. Uh, we've only got five to choose from. Uh, I think I'll go for Arbe for this one. So this is around Donington. That's all fine. Okay, here we go. We're speaking to you from the starting grid with just a few minutes to go before the race begins. Donington. Just finished their sighting lap. Soon the lights will go out and the Donington Grand Prix will begin. Those two strokes. Right. Smoking two strokes. Let's see what we can do. Here we go. Oh. Stop it. Behave yourself. Come on. Well, we've lost loads of uh, places from power wheeling everywhere. Oh, sliding and wheeling. Well, the 500s were monsters, so it's no surprise in that they're going to be more difficult to control than the other bikes in this game. Okay, we've moved up to 7th place at the moment up the inside, and we are up to 6th. Pass Roberts Jr. on the grass slightly. Oh, slide in again, come on. Okay, the inside of Kaczynski, not quite. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Got the foggy S is coming up and we're up to third place, just behind Swans, or just ahead of Swans now, but now behind him. And a massive slide there and on the way out as well. So there's only three laps around here. Closing, closing, closing. I don't think going around the outside is going to work. I think yeah, Gardner is in the lead. Down to the final corner. No, Swans is back up the inside through Goddard's. Okay, can I get him on the exit? Yes, I can. So, we are up to second place just behind Gardner. And he slowed right down there. And that is me passed into the lead. Okay, I can still hear him though, still wheeling all over the place. So there doesn't appear to be any um, tyre wear or fuel consumption in this mode. Which is probably for the best because uh, otherwise I'm all over the place. So we are leading now and... Uh, just over one and a half laps to go. Yeah, these uh, these bikes are difficult to control. Especially on the throttle, just trying to keep the front end down and stop the rear from sliding all over the place. Okay, into the S's. I think we're going to win this one. We are pulling away at quite a good rate now. Now that I'm starting to kind of get to grips with the handling of these 500cc monsters. They do feel savage. Way too wide into Goddard's there. Oh! Right, one lap to go. Fast lap the race, 130.1. 2.7 second lead over Gardner. Through Craner Curves. And into the old hairpin. A bit too wide into the old hairpin there. 3.4 second lead. Yeah, this one is definitely going to be a win. Which is good because we want as many uh, of the 
the credits or whatever they are in this mode. As long as it's not loot box style, I don't want stuff which is loot box style. Oh. Okay, so just a few corners to go down to the foggy S's for the final time. And up towards the Melbourne hairpin. Nice and gently. Four and a half second lead. And a big wheelie, and another wheelie, and another wheelie. <laughs> Final corner, very wide again, and a big slide and a wheelie. And a run to the line. There we go. So we won that one. Qualifying session has just so we've got 3,000, what are they meant to be? Diamonds? Let's have a look at the final times that show us the front row for the start of tomorrow's Grand Prix. Okay, so we've got 3,000. What happens next? Please don't be loot boxes. Thank you, 3,000. Ah, right, okay. That's better. At least you can see what you're, you're getting. So, I can't afford Rossi. Um, I think we'll skip this time and see what comes up next time. I'm guessing it's going to be random every time. So the next one we'll do the intermediate challenge which is six laps at a 90% difficulty that's around Aragon okay right so let's see how we get on with this one so we can win 9,000 diamonds for this one which will be added to our 3,000 um, I'm going to use who shall we use? Should go Swans. Here we are live from the starting grid where riders and engineers are talking over the last few details before the start of the race. Um, the final right. riders have taken Let's their place on the starting grid and everything is ready to start the race. Just a few seconds to go and the lights at the Aragon track will signal the start of the race. So there is tyre wear and fuel consumption in this one. There wasn't of course in the, the first race. Right, here we go. Oh, bit of a... Oh, come on. Come on. Oh. Well. We have uh, made it up to fifth place. The inside of Lawson. And that is fourth. And we're up to third now. Arbe who's in the lead this time that's who we used last time at Donington so six laps around here I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up crashing at some point so these things are all over the place I managed to make it up to second which is a bit of a surprise See if we can catch our base. So yeah, this one is uh, more difficult. High difficulty setting. Oh, another slide. Okay. Oh, it's fine. We're staying in second now. Gardner, try to come through. Still trying to get used to not pressing the Y button to to tuck. Um, even though it wasn't even a feature in MotoGP 19, like I said before, it's just something that I just kept doing as a habit. Um, and obviously in this game, it changes the HUD slightly every time you press it. It will give you the actual temperature of your tyres. And uh, yeah, I have changed the... Oh, Oh, I thought we were going to go through there. So it is showing kilometres an hour as opposed to miles an hour now. Because it's weird how they've done it. You can um, go to US settings, which is puts it as miles an hour. 
but then the uh, track temperature and that is in Fahrenheit but if you go to the other setting it gives you kilometers an hour but does the track temperature in degrees uh, Celsius so it's uh, a little bit weird I would rather have miles an hour and degrees Celsius what I actually know but for some reason some of as some are from the UK unfortunately you can either have one or the other at the moment which is uh, very strange so that's why it's saying kilometers an hour which means absolutely nothing to me but at least I understand the uh, the track temperature a little bit more but I may change that back at some point to uh, miles an hour so that I understand the actual speed a bit more rather than the, uh, the track temperature Okay, through the bus stop chicane. I am using a lot of rear tyre at the moment. I'll turn my power down to zero. Just because of uh, the fuel consumption at the moment. Let's try and build our range up a little bit. So, yeah, it's going up quite nicely actually. It's getting towards 10. 10 laps so yeah we've got some in reserve if and when we need to use it we can always turn it back up but yeah I need to make sure that we obviously do the actual race distance we don't want to run out but as soon as we are in the lead we've got a little gap so yeah zero at the moment is fine we can just build it up a bit and if we need to we can turn it up and uh, try and get pa back pass if I need to. But we might not necessarily need to do that. So we are using a bit more of the left side of the, well, the front and the rear tyre at the moment. Okay. I think the, the next, next step for the uh, the tyres is Obviously, some of the tracks in real life, they use uh, asymmetric tyres, which have a, a softer compound on one side of the tyre and a, a harder compound on the other side, um, especially for, for tracks like Saxon Ring, where there's more, um, more left-hand corners than right. So, yeah, and other, other tracks like that, like uh, Red Bull Ring as well, so maybe the next step to the asymmetric tyres in the or the asymmetric tyre wear in the game is maybe being able to choose a slightly harder compound on one side of the tyre and a softer compound on the other. But maybe that will overcomplicate things. I don't know. So we're on lap four. We are still leading. Put the power up to one because they are closing back in. And we've got fuel to spare at the moment. Try and get away from them again if I can. Yeah, of course, with the tyres going off, it's really becoming a handful to try and control this Suzuki now. We've only got a 0.7 of a second lead. Behave yourself. The last thing I want to do is crash at this point because we're on lap four of six. Okay, patient through here. Yeah, really slide in the bike. It always feels like it's going to go too far when you're sliding, but we, we've been alright so far, considering the amount of times it has just kicked out the rear of the bike. We're still on. We haven't crashed. That's the main thing. So 
clear through the final couple of corners. Yeah, left le left hand side of the rear tyre is uh, really going down. So we're on the penultimate lap now. And we've pulled away a little bit, 0.9 of a second. So yeah, the historic mode, different to what it was last year. Um, obviously last year it gave us scenarios with uh, riders and that, like it has done in the past. And then we've just had to, you know, once we've beaten those, um, we were then obviously given the, that rider unlocked to use whenever we wanted um, but it wasn't much of a challenge so I'm glad that you know this time you can pick whatever rider you've, you've got unlocked and there's difficulty settings and it does seem more difficult than, than last year's so daily challenges are obviously daily self-explanatory um, they're going to be different ones every day I will say these are Thursday's challenges. Uh, the video will probably be going up on Friday. Um, so they're not necessarily Friday's challenges. Um, oh, we've got a penalty. We've got a penalty there. But yeah, definitely more challenging than last year, which is good because the historic events last year were, were really easy. Um, didn't really have any troubles with any of them. Not that I can remember anyway. Alright, we've got one lap to go. Just over three laps worth of uh, fuel left in the tank. Yeah, one lap to go, we've got a 1.3 second lead. Just get through this last lap without crashing and all will be well. see uh, what we get offered to unlock after uh, this race as well. Okay. I might turn the power up to two when we get towards the end of the lap, especially for the straight. Because we've... Uh, Still got fuel to spare. 2.8 worth of uh, fuel left. That is obviously going down. Yeah, so I put like seven, seven laps worth of fuel in it just because obviously I, I like to carry a bit more fuel so that we can turn the, the, the power mapping up to uh, two at some point. left-hand side of the rear tyre is pretty knackered now. Uh, let's get to the end then. Power is on two. You can see it start flashing now because uh, we're using it up really quickly now. It doesn't matter, we've literally got to get through this corner and the final corner without crashing. And we have done. And it's going to be a win here. Job done again. The fourth and final was that nine thousand we've won? Has only just come to a close. We already have some idea of who might be favourites for the upcoming qualifying sessions. Sweet. Right. Job done. Give me my rewards. What can we unlock? That's given us twelve thousand. Okay, so Danny Pedroza, Yamaha Factory Racing from 2012, and the Blue Aprilia team from 2000. Uh, definitely the Yamaha. Actually, we could just unlock all of them, because then at least we've unlocked two teams and a rider. That's what we'll do. Right, guys, I'm going to leave this video here, so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more content, and I shall see you guys in the next video. See you.